Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel. Shall come to thee, O Israel. We thank God for you today. We thank God for this Sunday, the fourth Sunday of Advent. A call to worship. One comes seeking a sign from you, the one who sits upon the throne. We come seeking to worship you, the one who dwells with us always. We come seeking to witness your might, a child to be born in a coming night. God of love, fellowship love, serious love, love unending love, everlasting love, we gather in place of gratitude for the way you love has come. I believe this into your heart. We know and we stand in awe of your work. In our own time, we love it. In our own time, we it come. Give in, O shepherd. Stir up the might in this place. Give us life, and we will call on your name. As we worship you in spirit and in truth. Amen.
scripture reading today is Isaiah 7, 10 through 16. Again the Lord spoke to us, ask the sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as Sheol and as high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. And he said, Hear then, O house of David, it is too little for you, two weary men, that you weary my God also. Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, a young woman shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Ishmael. Sorry, we'll be dead. Emmanuel. He shall eat curds and honey. When he knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good, for before the child knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land before whose two kings are in dread will be deserted. The psalm reading today is Psalm 80. You can find it on page 661 in your hymnal. Please join in the refrain. We will be reading 1 through 7, then 17 through 19. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock, you who are enthroned upon the cherubim, shine forth before Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh. Stir your might and come to save us. The vineyard of the Lord, God of Israel. Restore us, O God, let your face shine, that we may be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angry with your people's prayers? You have fed them with the bread of tears, and given them tears to drink in full measure. You make us the scorn of your neighbors, our enemies laugh among themselves. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine, that we may be saved. But let your hand be upon the one at your right hand, the one whom you made strong for yourself. The of the Lord Then we will never turn back from you. Give us life, and we will call on your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. The of the Lord is the house of But knew her not 
until she had born a son and called him the name Jesus. God's people, God's word for God's people. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. great, 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 
your great great grandmother, a great aunt, the prostitute. We find at this moment that Joseph, 42 generations later, is about to become the adopted father of the Messiah. The individual we call Jesus, who will be Emmanuel, God with us, but will also be the man who is both divine and human. God chose them because of their pure hearts. God chose them not because of their status, wealth, or position in society, but he chose them because he wanted the world to know that a, a Savior would come in the world to save his people. Not just you and I, but the world. The Virgin Mary, a virgin, will give birth. In the Old Testament text we read today, we find Isaiah 7, 13 through 14. Then Isaiah says, Hear now, you house of David, it is not enough to try the patience of humans. Will you try the patience of my God also? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a son. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and call him Emmanuel. God is with us. This great miracle and assignment is an example that because you don't believe, you think you might not believe, you are suspicious, does not mean it's not true. The truth is all in the attributes of God. Love, grace, mercy, a tender heart, forgiving, kind, patience, and gentle. Fit who this virgin is. You see, my brothers and my sisters, God chose a person who's meek in spirit. He chose a person who was young. He chose a person who was not necessarily polluted with the world's perspectives in life. Why this miracle? Why for us? I've come to realize when I hear the word miracle, it is something that cannot be explained. You see, we live in a society where everything has to be explained. If it doesn't make sense, if it doesn't add up, it's not true. We live in a society where if you can't prove it, it doesn't matter. Just for a moment as I thought about that, I thought of the, 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 the doubting Thomas, who said to the disciples, that the disciples had seen Jesus come back from the dead. He said, unless I see the nails in his hand, I will not believe. We too, unfortunately, sometimes are that person. If you can't prove it, it don't exist. If one plus one don't equal two, it does, it, 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 it's not right. But we find in this text, we find in this miracle, we find in this divine story, God taking two human beings as adopted parents to bring in the Messiah, the Savior, to save the world. So to anyone who has adopted a child, to anyone who has been adopted, find yourself special. Find yourself special that somebody would take you and love you and care for you despite the fact you do not come from their blood. That's what we find with Mary and Joseph. It is God the Father 
who is Jesus Christ the Father. Jesus Christ does not have a mother, but yet God finds it fitting that he would give this young virgin girl that opportunity to first and foremost be a mother, but not just a mother, a mother that will save the world. A mother son who will save the world. A miracle, as I said again, is something you can't explain or understand. I have listened, I had a grand, I had a grandmother that had 14 children. I am a father of two, but a doctor's father of many. Of many. And I have many brothers and sisters who are no blood to me. And I used to ask my grandma, I watched my grandmother with those 14 children, and she loved all of them equally. And I said to myself, how can somebody, one human being, love all of them so equally? But then she put that ice on the cake. She began to love her grandchildren the same. What am I getting at? This one human being, you perhaps are a grandmother, you perhaps have been a parent, you perhaps are a godfather, you perhaps have been a person that somebody said, you're my father, you're my grandfather, you're my grandmother, you're my godmother. It is something about the love of God that he bestows upon us to allow us to love people we have no relationship with. Well, I've come to realize the human mind, which is absolutely fascinating, what I've learned in my seminary training and in my professional training is that the human mind can only comprehend 13%. So let me go there. Everything from the time you wake up in the morning to the time you go to sleep, you're only using 13% at your best day of your mind. That means there's 87% of your mind that's not being used. Not being used. So scientists have said if individuals could isolate themselves and just be in a place where there are no interruptions, they might increase it to 50%. What am I getting at? One of the reasons why many of us don't understand what a miracle is because our minds cannot comprehend the fact that God could take a 14-year-old young woman and make her become pregnant with the Holy Spirit. Because our minds, our perspectives, what we've lived and learned says, a man and a woman must come together and bring a child into the world. Well, God shows us a different way. But let's go a step further. <clears throat> if we look at the perspective, when you look at if you've been married, if you look at, if you've been in a relationship with somebody, I have watched individuals like my grandparents who were married 50, 60 years. And you know, a young woman said to me about maybe five, 10 years ago, she said, you know, when I look at you and me sometimes, you almost look alike. And I looked at her and said, you look alike. What she was seeing was, not the facial look alike, but how we communicate with one another, how we finish each other's sentences, how we corrected each other before the other one corrected. What happens is when you end a relationship with someone for a long period of time, you grow to love, you grow to dislike, and you grow to tolerate one's differences. And that's what makes love happen. That's why when I see individuals who've been married or been together a long period of time and they lose a loved one, 
they lose part of themselves. That's real. But also understand the miracle there. The miracle is you had the opportunity to love and be with that person. But the miracle is that when that person leaves, you're still here mm -hmm. to continue to love and help those who perhaps are going through the same thing you are going through. Mary accepted her assignment. Joseph has some issues with it. Because Joseph, like many of us, is looking with his human eyes. He's like, you're pregnant? I have not been with you. The only way I know of you to be pregnant is when two come together. So Joseph, in his own human way, wanted to just let it be, divorce her quietly. But there's something about God coming to you in the midnight hour. There's something about God coming to you in your dreams and reminding you, no, Joseph, I had this plan 42 generations ago. I had this plan in your life prior to you even meeting Mary. Take her as your wife because she's becoming the mother of the Messiah through the Holy Spirit. We say, what is the Holy Spirit? When I was a kid, I used to think the Holy Spirit was the hooping and hollering, <laughs> the emotion, the speaking in tongues. Mm -hmm. oh, I've learned the hard way. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit, the love I have for my fellow person. It's the gentleness I have to those who are not gentle to me. It's the faithfulness I have when others are not faithful. It's the kindness I have when people are not kind to me. It is the self-control that I have when others around me are not self-controlled. See, see, that's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is something that works in your life, not just on Sundays, not just when you come into church, not just when you are among people that are nice like you, but the Holy Spirit comes and controls and rules your life. It's when Jesus is about to go and start his ministry that we will go into the next season of Lent. When he was baptized by John the Baptist, the Holy Spirit came upon him. And when the Holy Spirit came upon him, he could then go preach to the lost, to the oppressed, and to those that were oppressed. It's the Holy Spirit, my brothers and sisters, this morning, that allows us to believe in the miracle when it does not make sense. If I use my logic, there's no reason for me to stand up here right now. If I use the logic of where I came from, where I grew up, what my intentions were from the time I was a little boy until my age of 60, I shouldn't be standing up here now. But it's not logic that God uses. He said to Jesse, when Jesse, we went to find the next king of Israel, Samuel, he said, I've looked at seven sons. Is there another? He says, another? He's in the field. Go get him. Because Sandy said, God looks at the heart and not the exterior. And so, when God looks at your heart and my heart and Mary's heart and Joseph's heart, he begins to say, I'm going to do a good work for the kingdom. The virgin birth is real. Think as you look at this Advent season, how God can use you in the next season of your life. My mantra will be and will always be, if there's water in the cup, it's a quarter filled, it's an eighth full, it's half full, it's three quarters filled. It's never empty. As I was thinking 
and writing this sermon this week, I was thinking of one of my favorite movies. It's a Wonderful Life. I get emotional when I look at this movie because it looks at the perspective of what life would be like if you or I were not here. And it goes through a series where the devil is busy. He makes things happen. And this individual who's had all these plans to go live this great life and travel the world finds himself in Seneca Falls, which is near the Buffalo, New York area, I found out. And he finds himself not making sure that people lose everything they own. And in the midst of that, because of one of the people who is somewhat careless and makes a mistake, some other individuals take advantage of him. And he says, he thinks it's the end of the world. So God sends an angel to go and be his guardian angel, to protect him, because this angel is trying to get his wings. No matter how fictional this might be, or unfictional, whatever you call it, how fake it might be, the moral of the story is what life would be like if he was not there. And he took him to a series. By the end of that story, when he went through the town and saw the people, maybe he helped. When he went through the house that was so cold and drafty and needed to be fixed, he was grateful to God by knowing what life would have been like without him. I want you, as I conclude this sermon, to put yourself in that situation. What would life be like if you were not there? What lives would not have been saved? What lives would not have been changed? What situations would not have, been, would not have happened? Well, that's why Mary is so important. We serve Jesus Christ because we believe by faith for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son. For whom shall ever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. But this is what I learned in my early seminary days. I learned the Apostle Tree. And it was in the Apostle Tree when it says, Almighty God, my Heavenly Father, I thank you, God, that you came into this world and made a difference in my life. And it's in the Apostles' Creed where it says, I believe in God the Father, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered upon the righteous power, was crucified, dead, and buried, and the third day he rose from the dead. Amen. Yes, sir. From this we should come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the church universal, which was really the Catholic church when we were birthed out of the Protestant church. Uh -huh. Hello. I believe in the Holy Spirit. I used to say Catholic slash universal church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, Resurrection body, life everlasting. Amen. That is our faith. That is why we believe in the virgin birth. We believe in the virgin birth because we believe she was born a virgin. And her son died on that cross. And because her son died on that cross, he died for our sins. And he gave us life more abundantly. You can believe otherwise. That's the Christian faith. And I say that as I conclude because I lost a good friend yesterday. Clarence and I lost a very good friend yesterday. John Murphy died yesterday. Mm -hmm. 71 years old. One of the greatest student affairs professionals. Yes, but as I pondered in my sleep last night, as I looked at the Bible that his wife gave me, that was his mother's Bible, who was a Roman Catholic, I looked at that Bible last night and I was sitting downstairs preparing for tonight, today. And I said, God, John Murphy was a good man. John Murphy believed in you. And 
And I pray, dear God, that you give comfort to his wife and daughter and son in law during this time. Because Clarence and I are hurting. But this is the good news. Acting from the Bible, President of God. That's what I'm holding for. That's what the Empire said. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus. On Christ's solid rock I stand, all the ground shall see the same. Why do I say that? I love you all. I put no faith in anyone. I put my faith that God, that God got our backs. God has our backs. And that's why the Virgin Mary, wow. for me, wow. Wow. and I pray for you, you believe. You can believe, but you don't have to understand. Once you put the word understand, you're going to get in trouble. Hear me well. Faith is the substance of things hopeful and the evidence of things not seen. God expecting all of us to trust him despite what we see in front of us. Amen. 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 Yes, sir. Up next to him this morning is hymn number 83. People look east. Look east for the star. Look east to the light. Hymn number 83.
Chicago. We pray for Brianna, CJ, Jesse, Anthony, and Junior Senior. We pray for Eric, Shalom, Louie. We pray for Kim, Annie, Liz, Rose, Leah, Surgery. We pray for Jeff, Judy, and Lorraine. We pray for the John Mercy family. We pray for his wife, his daughter, his son-in-law, family and friends. And I ask that you pray for Clarence and I, because he was our supervisor. Carl here knows who John Murphy is. We worked in the university for 30 years. We pray for everyone who has lost a loved one during this 2022 year. Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thou art the kingdom, and power, and glory, forever.
we ask that our ushers please come.
like if you were not in it. Know the sweet switch to be like. We look and say that maybe that was a selfish act. But do we really know what he was going through? Let us show grace and mercy to those who are struggling with the issue of whether they want to be here. We serve a God. We have a God who loves us on this side and the other side. Amen. Help us all to love and support one another during these Help difficult us. times. Yes, sir. When you see it, speak it. If you feel it, act. Amen. Remember the Virgin Mary. Amen. Give it an assignment to save us all. Give it an assignment to bring the Messiah in the world. The world. Accept your assignments, my brothers and sisters. Whatever God has gifted you to do to make a difference, to make this world a better place, accept your assignment. Now, may God be with you this Advent season. May he touch you and your family. May he bless you and give you his heart and love. For that's what he wants for all of you. Bless him in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.